So around the barb out first, and that's how you sort, we sort our steel posts in. Just makes it so much easier, I reckon, rather than trying to wrap the strainers around the strainer post there. You always love looking at a new fence. It just, yeah, looks neat and tidy, and, and they found the hay. But I just got a notification that Ed Sheeran's new song just came out. Yeah, most of these averages four and a half so far. Good morning everyone, what's going on today? It uh bit of a wet one this morning. We actually got some rain yesterday which was which was uh very welcomed. We were starting to get pretty desperate for that, which is good. All the crops, some of the canola, the leaves were sort of starting to wilt over a little bit, which um yeah is a sign that they're trying to conserve water. So it's very much welcomed. But no, I've just come out here, we've been doing a bit of fencing lately. We split a paddock in half and we finished that fence this week and then this is just a tree lot. Ah, uh, there's, there's four lines of trees, you can't really see them at the moment. Well, there's one there. Um, just a mixture of, mixture of all, all different types of trees. Along here, along the top of this hill here, you can, might be able to tell. It, uh, we've sort of done a rest that way. And then this is sort of the last little bit, the boundary's just over there. So, just as a bit of a windbreak and a bit for, these are, these are all sort of lambing paddocks um, around the, around the sh shearing shed and house here. So we, we sort of putting these in as sort of windbreaks and, and um, not only for lambing years, obviously just for any sheep in general to get away from the, from the wind because most of our wind comes from that way. So just on top of the hill here, but that's what we're doing this morning. I'm running, so we ran the barb out first and that's how you sort, we sort our steel posts in. And then now I'm just gonna run some, run a couple plane wise. Yeah, so we're, we're doing a hinge joint fence here. I don't know what hinge joint is, it's that stuff on the trailer there, or that's what it'll um, eventually look like. Although this fence is gonna be higher hinge joint than that one. So yeah, we'll just do a top and bottom wire with this fence. Won't worry about a belly wire, cause there's not gonna be, I oh, will probably put a belly wire here, just cause there's a, there's a gate there. And bet by belly wire, I mean one in the middle. But along, along here, I won't worry about it. It doesn't need it. There's gonna be no force on this fence, so. Laneways and, and high pressure areas, I always put a belly wire, but if it's just a fence in the middle of the paddock, there's there's really no point, especially when when we'll still tie the hinge joint, we'll twitch the hinge joint, top, bottom, and middle. So, so anyway, we'll uh, we'll run a few planes. one done the easy one top wire is always the easiest bottom's always the worst you can see I've marked where the wires are meant to go I'm um, on the post there Alrighty, so we've got all the plane wires run, run out now. So just the 
just the two and then I'll do that belly wire up the other end there but um, we'll go back and get some hinge joint I've got to, got to load some hay hay at nine so we'll come back out and oh, we'll see I might dad's just going to rip a few more tree tree um, tree lines but it would be easier if he was here to help with the hinge joint it's um it's so much easier for two people so I might actually wait for for him to do that so we might go and do something else for an hour or so um, while he's doing that but yeah so I usually tie it off at the post and then come back a post or two and strain it up just makes it so much easier I reckon rather than trying to wrap the strainers around the strainer post there that's just what I find is a lot easier uh, but everyone does their fences a little bit different I'd, I'd reckon yes, sir. Yes, sir. So as I'm going along, I'm just um, taking these clippers here and clipping clipping it up on the top wire every now and then. And then that little gully there, I, I clip it at the bottom too. Just makes it a lot easier when you go to strain at the other end. You haven't got to walk back and um, sort of lift the fence up. We're using, um, what's this, eight wire uh, hinge joint. And the reason, lambing paddock and the ewes generally like to lamb along this top fence line here. So it, the smaller the eight wires got the smaller gap. So obviously the more wires, the more wires you use in the in the fence, the less likely the lambs are going to be able to get through that that bottom wire there. The little lambs, because the lambs, being silly as they are, generally tend to crawl through things and get stuck there. Keep going. Fence done. Or just about we ran out of um those these clips that go on the fence here on top here. But um, I'll just have to go and get some more of them when I'm in town. It's only the end bit there. But uh, no, it's come up pretty well. We twitched it at the post here, and then yeah, put these staples in between. Um, no, it looks pretty good. You always love looking at a new fence, it just, yeah, looks neat and tidy and until uh, the kangaroos decide they want to try and fight the fence and just run straight into it and get caught in it and wreck it and... <laughs> no, it not, shouldn't be too bad here. We don't really have too many kangaroos on our property. Over the back there's a few, but um, we are pretty lucky. They sort of stick, stick over the other side of the road where there's a bit more bush and especially since we've been having all this rain and got all this feed, they don't tend to come out into the open, which is... Which is good for us. They seem to stay on the neighbour's property. <laughs> so I reckon, I reckon the gal posts, like the galvanised steel posts, look a lot better. But in the middle of the paddock here, you don't really. They do cost more, obviously, and you don't really need them out here. If you're doing it around a shed or a driveway or something, I always use them because they do look nicer. They might last a little bit longer, but I mean, how often do you see a steel post, you know, break or bug it? It takes a long time to to wreck a steel post. So. Yeah, no, ready for some sheep now. We just put a bit of a bit of an outback gate at the end here. Just got to get a steel post and put in the middle there, just because we'll extend this laneway all the way down here. But um, also to try, also for getting in and out of um, there to water those trees, we had to put some sort of a gate at the end here. So that's what we did there. But no, this paddock's been destocked for a long time. It's 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 not. It's not great grass what's growing in here, so we'll, we'll try and knock it down um, and probably go into crop um, either next year or or possibly in, in springtime. We'll just see what happens. Try and get it back to a sort of good improved pasture. It, has, it, it was sown a long time ago, obviously, to improve pasture, but yeah, it's just about bugging now. Combined with drought, combined with, you know, just being heavily stocked every year for lambing, it um, just needs a bit of help. So we sure we sure another 400 uh, second cross land yesterday and um, after the set shed, searing sheds up there and we just let them out into this sort of shed paddock 
time after they're shorn just for a bit of pick and they found the hay so it must be pretty good stuff that if they like these second cross lambs would never have seen the hay so they must have been able to smell it and um well they've they've half wrecked this bale but um what we're going to do if you remember in the last video i was um feed lotting some getting some started on on grain in the feed lot and so they're out of the paddock now on a feeder just a random paddock while we wait for these crops to to um to to get ahead a bit so probably hopefully another you know might only be um week and a half two weeks and we can put some lands on crop we're going to do the same with this lot of lands put them in the feed lot and get them eating on grain and get them used to that and know what, what a feeder is and a hay feeder is so um it's just in a little holding paddock now i'm going to put this bale in there I'm um, just waiting for a fellow to come, another person to come pick up bale of silage. I also want to get the, get all the stud ewes, old horse that stud ewes in the yards and just, just check them over, give, them, give a few of them a quick condition score and um, see what they're doing and see if we really need to start feeding them or not because they're getting close to lambing. This is the ryegrass. The ryegrass um, is looking pretty good after that shower of rain. It's perked up today. It's even grown today by the look of it. It's um, yeah, it's just what everything needed is a drop of rain. Go back. Go right up. Get a white front. Get a white, Max. Well, I just got these ewes in, but I just got a notification that Ed Sheeran's new song just came out. And that's, I don't know, he does like some some premiere thing on YouTube. But there's 11,000 views in the first minute. <laughs> so there must have been a few people waiting. Don't mind a bit of Ed Sheeran. I actually went up and saw him when he was in Sydney. He's been doing a tour, as most of you probably know, which he was really good. It's pretty well just him and the guitar and a piano. The band, his band came on for a few songs, but other than that, it was just him. It was pretty, yeah, he's pretty good to watch. No, I'm just back to farming. <laughs> Um, after that short interlude, um, I'm just going to run or 20, 20, 25 views through the gate here, and I'm going to run them up here, and I'm actually going to condition score them. I think I may have said that before, but earlier, but um, just so I know where they're at. I mean, you get a reasonable indication by looking at them, but until you get a good feel on them, then you know exactly what they're doing. And as they're getting closer to lambing, it's just really important that we keep a keep an eye on them and keep the feed up to them. So we probably will. We might just dribble, start dribbling a little bit of grain into them at this stage in this paddock that they're going on um, while we're giving these other lambing paddocks a, a chance, the newer pastures, to improve. I touched on it a bit um, when we were sowing, but yeah, we've put a lot of crops in and some of that will be used for, for lambing ewes, but probably mainly crossbred ewes. These stud ewes will be on these these sort of newer pasture paddocks around the house here. But also we'll, we'll, graze the, we'll graze most of the crops, not all of them, most of them with um, with these second cross lambs, just because we didn't get rid of as many as we would have liked earlier on. So we've got a heap of them left. So that's sort of got to get those lambs growing and fatten off, off off the place before the ewes go on there. So a lot of those ewes won't lamb till July, July, August anyway. So we've got still got plenty of time. Come here. Go right up. Get a wipe there. Get a wipe. Go right up. Get a wipe, Frank. Get a wipe, Max. Get a wipe there. Go right up. Here, Max. Here. Good girl. Here, Maggie. I don't, think I don't think I really need to be worrying about this, judging from these few that I've done. So I'm just feeling their sort of loin area. 
It's a bit hard to explain. I'd suggest uh, probably YouTubing another video on looking at, I'm only new to what I've been doing a lifetime new management course um, this year and it's something I'm still learning so I'm probably not the best one to explain it but you're just feeling how much, how well you can feel their loin, their, sh their short ribs there. Um, one to five condition score is. One being really bad. And five being, five being very, very fat. I wouldn't say it's great because they're probably over fat, which, uh, yeah, most of these average is four and a half so far. It's just a little app. This is actually on AgriWeb. But it's just a little app that you, that you um, can, can score each U and then it gives you obviously the count and then the max and min and then the, the average, so which is pretty handy. And then that just goes into the mob on AgriWeb. But yeah, so as I said, I'm new to it. So that's really the main reason I do it. That's really the main reason I'm doing this, just to keep my hand in. Um, I can sort of, you can you can tell, that especially these old, old horse that use there. You know, they're, they're, they're pigs, so they eat a lot, and therefore they, especially this time of year, they're pretty fat. Right, so I just drafted off these rogue second cross lambs from the from the ewes. So they're right to go at their paddock now. I think Dad's just up there fixing a hole in the fence. Then we'll let them up there. What do you reckon, Mags? Sit. Sit. What have you been doing? Hmm? Pretty happy with the way they're progressing. They're getting scanned. Um, first week of April, I think. So that's, I think that's not next week, but the week after. But hopefully they, um, hopefully they scan all right. I'm sure they will. I was pretty happy with them when we when we joined them. So with the condition that they're in, so all should be good. Back. Go back, Linny. Sit down. Sit down! So you see the, the, some of the ewes are marked on their backs there. Um, if you remember the rams, the rams are in here covering them and that's just so we know who the father is. They come out, they, the rams went in on the, on the 3rd of March. So they'll come out, at the, so they'll be in there for five weeks. They'll come out what's at the start of April sometime there's a few there marked which is good the rams were still riding a couple on the way in so there's still a few sort of cycling but doesn't seem to be many that aren't in lamb i just come out to get these take these second cross lambs back um and put in the feed lot for a couple of days as i said to get them eating some grain so they were just in here last night after shearing but um this is one of the lambing paddocks that the ewes will come onto um which is looking pretty good it's, all shooting up underneath there, so give it another couple of weeks and it'll be growing pretty well after, the, after this little bit of rain. But it, uh, yeah, des desperately needed it though. I'll go grab the ute with the with the trailer on it and I'll just sprinkle sprinkle a bit of feed like through the gate here. So it's sort of the first thing that they get to. Might help a little bit. Well, I'm too late, they've already gone in there. <laughs> I'll dribble a bit of feed out over near the trough then. I've just been standing here for five minutes, just um, just seeing whether they, they do go straight for a bit of hay or the, the grain. But um, as I said there before, they got into that loosened hay yesterday when they were just out here after shearing. So they, they'll know what that is. They were grazing when I went out to, to muster them, so they're probably sort of just having a bit of a spell now. There, there's half of them are sitting down back there, so they're probably half full. But um, oh, it's about five o'clock now and they're sort of... They'll probably start grazing again soon. So hopefully they'll go for a wander and find the find the feed because as you can see there's not a lot of not a lot of picking here for them. But no, there's also some some pellets left in that, that lick feeder there too from from the other mobs. And they got a really strong smell. It didn't take the other ones long at all, only a day sort of to get onto it. Anyway. I don't know, it sort of looks like it might might rain a bit. I don't know, it's looking it's starting to look a bit dark over there, but. Hopefully it, it would be good to get some more, but uh, I'm just going to go check these other lambs feeders and I'll put some put some pellets, take some pellets with me and put in that feeder for them and check them, make sure they're going alright. 
but I might leave that video there. I think that's that's enough. But uh, anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and with that, we'll we'll catch you in the next one. Alrighty, see ya. Bye.